At the beginning of the Krebs cycle, the two carbon compound acetyl coenzyme A that was produced from the link reaction combines with the four carbon compound oxaloacetate in order to produce a six carbon compound. This six carbon compound is then converted into a five carbon compound, and this occurs through the loss of one molecule of CO2. This is also where we first see oxidation coupled with the reduction of the electron carrier NAD+. One NAD+, is reduced into NADH. The five carbon compound is then converted into a four carbon compound, again by losing one molecule of CO2 we also see another reduction. Another NAD plus is reduced into NADH. In order to complete the cycle, this four carbon compound is then converted back to the original four carbon compound oxaloacetate. In this process, one ATP is produced from phosphorylating one ADP. We see reduction taking place twice in this part. FAD is reduced to FADH2, FAD is the other electron carrier, and then NAD again is reduced into NADH. Now it's important to remember that for one molecule of glucose you produced two pyruvates in glycolysis, which then produced two acetyl coenzyme A's in the link reaction. So therefore for one molecule of glucose you have to go around the Krebs cycle twice. If you do this then you ultimately produce four molecules of CO2, two molecules of ATP, six NADH, and two FADH2. Now the energy released by all of these oxidation reactions that cause the reduction of NAD plus and FAD is now carried to the cristae of the mitochondria by NADH and FADH2. These are the reduced forms of the electron carriers. Now before we move on, it might be worth noting that you may have seen the Krebs cycle being referred to as a tricarboxylic acid cycle, but it's the same thing. The other thing is you may have seen the 6-carbon, 5-carbon and 4-carbon compounds named in diagrams that you have or in textbooks. But it's very clear in the IB syllabus that they say the names of the intermediate compounds in the Krebs cycle are not required.